If your image of a graffiti artist is a long-haired, hip-hop listening, unshaven, spray-paint wielding social misfit, you might be right. <laughs> But if your image of graffiti is spray-painted public scribble-scrabble with no artistic value, you would be wrong. It's art, it's aerosol art, and it's made by aerosol artists. Communities can use art to survive, and the artists that help them may come from unexpected corners of the art world. Feeding our artistic souls is important, and using art to feed our actual communities is possible, too. You may not realize this, but public art, and aerosol art in particular, what many people may think of as graffiti, can be used by communities for cultural awareness and economic empowerment. As a lifelong art lover, producer of public art, and curator of the Museum of Public Art in Baton Rouge, I made it my mission to understand the nuances of the aerosol art form and to encourage spaces where it can shine as a productive piece for the community. But before we get into talking about the positive role that aerosol art offers communities, I want to discuss a little bit about what the term aerosol art actually means. Every generation has redefined what it considers as art. In the 1970s, when James Topp, King B, and Part One, who painted our first mural in Baton Rouge, were writing their names on New York City subway trains, the authorities at that time did not consider their method of self-expression as art, but rather as vandalism, which needed to be eradicated because it contributed to the cultural and moral decline of the city. But it was those particular writers and others like them that devoted their energy to writing their names on walls and trains that set the foundation for the murals that we created. Aerosol art is, in essence, writing one's name in a stylized fashion in public. Thus, aerosol artists refer to themselves as writers. Underserved communities are a natural home to aerosol artists for three main reasons an abundance of derelict property, limited community oversight, and absentee property owners that are more concerned with rent collection and property management. But there are also exciting opportunities for communities to partner with aerosol artists for their own advantage. Communities with limited resources can open their doors to aerosol artists and street artists in an effort to embrace and revitalize their history and designate the community as an arts district, which may entitle property owners within the community to state and local tax credits earmarked for the purpose of allowing the property to be used in the production of public art. Artist selection is the main factor that will determine whether the mural is positively received. For the Museum of Public Art, I invited artists from all over the world who had an affinity for cultural expression and the ability to adapt the art to the environment in which it exists. I also researched artists who could paint fast, finishing a mural in three to five days on average, because every day they were in town cost us money, and that was a big advantage. <laughs> Our second mural, was produced by Tats Crew from New York City. They are legends in the aerosol art community, and I felt that they could make a statement that would get attention. I can remember calling them often, asking if they had an idea of what they would paint. And if they did, they were not willing to share it with me, even though I was the one that commissioned them. Needless to say, the finished mural was a total surprise. It features state and local symbols, together with their characteristic burners and characters, creating a mural that resonates with everyone. After this experience, I realized how important it is to carefully select artists who can intuitively interpret what is needed. And after having produced over 40 murals, I have observed that 
Even though our artists come from different parts of the world, they genuinely want to interact with people from the community. And they have a different way of interpreting what they observe. In most cases, for the Museum of Public Art, we allow the artists the freedom to paint what they want and in what manner. However, we're also not opposed to collaboration. We secured permission to paint on the side of a beauty shop, and the owner wanted to be involved in the process of determining the content and elements of the mural. I knew that I needed to find an artist that had experience painting African-American women in an Afrocentric manner, and immediately the artist Raman Static from Chicago came to mind. Static drew a sketch that was eventually approved by the owner after some back and forth. And the final mural consists of four African-American women with different skin tones and hairstyles, with bright colors, giving the mural a definite Afrocentric feel. And after this mural, I was also introduced to the board of directors of the historic Lincoln Theater in, in Baton Rouge. They wanted to paint a mural on the rear wall of the theater, which was being tagged in an unfortunate manner. Their only stipulation was that we illustrate what historically the theater represented, which is art, music, and history. And there were also other areas of the community that were in need of transformation. We painted four buildings at the intersection of Terrace and St. Joseph Streets, depicting the journey of African Americans in Louisiana. The first building was painted entirely by community residents with house paint and geometric shapes, depicting the African motherland. The second building in the series depicts a period of enslavement. And we have a 3D image of an elderly lady sitting in a rocking chair as she's sewing a quilt tending to a young child. The third building in the series on the corner depicts Baton Rouge's early involvement in the civil rights movement with the Baton Rouge bus boycott in 1953. And we continue this historic theme around the corner to the abandoned property, painting the old South Baton Rouge race riot of 1972 on the side of the building, and a 3D image of H. Rap Brown, an old South Baton Rouge native, famous for the slogan, burn, baby, burn, holding a lit match on the porch. And public art can be used as an agent, not only for visual transformation, but, bet, but public art can give rise to social engagement, which can lead to a positive change in the way communities see themselves. Murals are a natural repellent to negative energy. Graffiti taggers will not tag a wall where there's a mural simply out of respect. The Lincoln Theater was being tagged as a memorial to slain drug dealers before the mural that we painted was created. And drug dealers who want to go unnoticed will not sell drugs in the area where there's a mural and will tend to move to a less visible location. Case in point, there was a drug dealer across the street from the houses that we painted on Terrace who moved from the house he occupied simply because of all the attention that the houses across the street were getting. As the artist Pose too says, art raises the vibration of the community. And in communities that want to get the ball rolling, they can organize volunteers and start painting blighted properties with simple shapes and simple colors, and this is something that anyone can do, and it can have a big impact. And if there are resources to organize a festival or an event, many graffiti artists will come on their own dime, especially if a few legendary artists are known to attend. And eventually, with time and consistent effort, a community which was once known for all things negative and shunned by the city is now the focus of attention for all things good. Here, a bridge is created between the old South Baton Rouge community and the broader community the outside world in a positive way. And when a community is considered as an asset rather than a liability, it becomes easier 
to apply for funds for further development. We also have seen that the city can also benefit from the creation of public art. For example, the city of Philadelphia, through the nonprofit Mural Arts Program, receives over $2.5 million annually from visitors who come to Philadelphia to see the murals located all over the city. And in cases where communities want to keep gentrification at bay and want to have a seat at the table with politicians and developers, it is important to bring something to that table, otherwise the needs and concerns of the community are often not heard. And I submit to you that when communities bring art to the table, there is less talk about demolition and more talk about preservation. Thank you.